Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the ribbon, the diamond ribbon stitch, and um, I'm going to do it in pattern of 10, but you can do it in 12 and 11. So 10, 11, and 12 is the set peg, so if you're going to work on a uh, loom, I would suggest dividing it by 10 or 11 or 12, and the number has to come out with no decimal point. It has to be a solid number. Okay, so what you're doing is you're going to be um, basically cinching ends to create a wave effect in the diamond pattern. And that's just, a, it looks more complicated than it is. It's really not that complicated. And um, in, the, in, the, in the box below, I'll provide the link to the written that helps you get the formula you need to make this hat in any loom or size that you want and explains how to do that and I'll kind of go in and explain how to do this at its base and then run from there on um, how to change it up for an 11 which is an odd number so first thing you want to do is you want to start off and you want to purl two rows so what I'll suggest is you go in and you purl two rows and pause the video to do it and then I will show you how to go about the next section of getting started with the diamond and this one's going to be in sets of 10 but again I will explain it in sets of 11 and 12 so that depending on what limb you have you can work up this pattern and if you have an S loom with a wedge it even gives you more versatility as to whatever size you want to use. So if there's a loom that you use it's normally circular but it's close but not quite working up evenly you can go to your S loom and you can use the wedge wherever you want. Same thing with this loom here it comes with a wedge you can adjust it to whatever size you want. This is the 90 peg 3 8 inch gauge and it does come with a wedge and you can wedge it to whatever size you need as well and uh, that gives you more versatility as, as well so if you have a long loom and you have wedges that'll help with the uh, the spacing so that you can get those numbers even if you're working with 10 11 or 12 and the S loom gives you even more versatility and uh, in fact in the, to, in the written instructions I say what looms that already have peg counts you can use in the Cindy Wood Spectrum if KB or some of the other looms have those numbers in it I would use it um, I do include 48 the 48 peg in there um, but that'll give you really large diamonds um, for that and um, you can use the uh, the purple loom that um, the original purple hat loom from um, Provo Crafts the Nifty Knitter Provo Crafts one and um, you can use that one and you can use the replica that Cindy Wood put out as well so the 48 is an option it's 12 um, pegs but I wouldn't ever go below 10 so go ahead and pause the video and do your two rows of purl and I'll get back to showing you what the next step is okay when getting started on the next round and where you're going to um, what I call a prep row for your cinched area your first peg you're going to yarn over slip and the reason why I call it a yarn over slip is you're yarning over to create a stitch and you're slipping which means you're not doing anything with that one okay and normally my yarn overs are like a lay over the peg but because we're doing two yarn overs on average right beside each other it doesn't work out as well so you're gonna do a yarn over and you're gonna knit one two three four five six seven eight okay so this is a peg one and this is also makes it nine you yarn over slip to finish the ten set here if you're doing eleven then you're going to 
be a knitting 10 in between and only a yarn overing one rather than two which is what we're going to be doing and if you're doing 12 you're going to knit 10 in between and then do the double yarn over in between here so that's the difference if you're doing 11 or 12 so you do another yarn over and then you're going to yarn over slip then you're going to knit 8 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yarn over 2 yarn over slip 2 knit 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yarn over 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yarn over 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yarn over 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yarn over 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yarn over 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yarn over 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and there's your yarn over which makes yarn over 2 okay that's your prep row this row that we're fixing to do you're going to do a total of eight times and what you're going to do is you're going to knit the yarn over and not touch that slip then you're going to knit eight two three four five six seven eight knit the yarn over knit the yarn over do not touch that slip then you're going to knit eight and you're going to continue this all the way around knitting the yarn overs and not touching that slip and you're going to do it for a total of eight rows so knit the yarn overs and then knit eight again you're going to do this all the way around for a total of eight rows and if you were doing 11 then it's going to be 10 and if you were doing 12 it would also be 10 rows rather than 8 okay um, and the reason I say that is because what you're actually knitting in between your yarn overs is the number of rows you're going to do on this <coughs> So if you're doing 11 or 12 sets, then you need to do 10 rows here rather than 8. But if you're doing the 10 set, then you need to do 8 rows of this row right here. So go ahead and pause the video and do your 8 rows and then I will show you the finisher of this section and then we go on to the stagger section and I will explain that on the 12 and the 11 as well as the 10. So go ahead and pause the video and complete your eight rows of this row and then we will come back and finish up this diamond section here and then start the stagger diamond section. Now it's time to cinch the diamond and we're at the beginning so what you want to do is you want to go in you want to purl two together and then you want to purl eight one two three 
four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you want to purl two together. This cinches your diamond in. Purl two together again. And then you purl your eight. And you're going to want to do this all the way around. So on those knitted yarn over where there's two stitches, you're going to purl the two together. And this cinches the diamond area in. It creates that diamond shape that you're after. So there's two and we're going to purl those two together and purl those two together. And then purl eight. Okay, I'm going to purl those two together, purl the two together, and purl. Pause the video, do this all the way around where you're purling two together, and then when you get back to your starting point, you want to purl one row. Okay. And then I will show you how to do the stagger effect. But you want to come in here and you want to do, get those two purled together all the way around. And then you'll want to do a single row of purl. And then I will show you how to stagger the diamonds so that they're not right on top of each other. Okay, it's time to show you how to stagger the design. Okay, so I can get that right. Alright, I'm going to show you how to stagger the design. So you were knitting eight. So you're going to knit eight again. One, two, three, four. Not eight, four. <laughs> Excuse me. So you're going to knit four. Then you're going to yarn over, slip two. Then you're going to knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's all it takes to stagger. And then you yarn over, slip the next two, and knit eight. And remember, um, if you're doing the 11, then you're going to um, knit over five, and then e-wrap, and then you'll do your 10. So, and eight. And, and then that's the, and you'll just, um, you'll yarn over slip your one after you knit over five, and it's just one when it's 11. It's two when it's 12, so you'll, instead of four, you'll do five, and then you'll do two, if you're doing the 12 set. And if you're doing the 11 set, you'll do five, and then you'll just yarn over slip one. So, um, that's how you stagger the 11 and 12, and this is how you stagger the 10. And then yarn over slip and knit 8. And then yarn over slip 2. And then knit eight. And 
yarn over slip two, knit eight, and you'll find that ten is probably going to be your easiest one to be able to do. Um, when you want to do this pattern, you'll find that ten is probably going to be your easiest and most consistent. If not, it's probably going to be twelve is your next batch, but eleven is not going to be real common. Finish this row and show you the next row. And yarn over slip and then knit the four. At this point, this next row is your repeat row. You will do eight rows of it. So knit four, then knit the yarn over, don't touch the slip, just like we did previously, knit eight, and so you're going to do just like you did before with this, you're going to do eight rows, and then you're going to um, go in and do the purling the two together and then purling all of them. So go ahead and pause the video and do eight rows of this row here where you're just going in and you're knitting eight and you're knitting the yarn over and not touching that slip. So you want to do eight rows of this. So go ahead and pause the video and get your eight rows done and then I will show you the last two rows of the set and then you start again after the purl two rows. So you just repeat over and over again after the purl two rows at the beginning of the video until you have however much you want. But the this particular pattern I'm working on, I only do two sets. And a full set is the diamond and the stagger. So Go ahead and pause the video, get that much done, and we'll go from there. Okay, we're going to finish up the stitch patterning, and you're going to purl four to get over to your yarn over slip area that you've been doing the knit the yarn over section on. And uh, when you get there, you will be purling two together to finish the closure of the diamond ribbon. Now I also would like to make a note that if you want more of a dimensional ribbon you can always add more rows in between. I was doing I believe um, 8 or 10 rows. You can do 12 rows. The more rows you do um, the more dimensional because the more of a cinch you have on the sides um, you can e-wrap this rather than knit it if you'd like. That would also have an effect on it. But um, basically what you're doing to finish this up is you're purling everything and then you're purling the two together on those knit yarn overs. And um, it works the same on the 11 and 12. And in the pattern, I will give you an idea on how to go about this and everything. But you can always do more rows in between your diamonds to uh, get what you want. Um, a more of a cinched look to it um, to give more of a ribbon. But um, this is really not a difficult patterning to create. It's a matter of um, just knitting um, the, the yarn overs and not touching the slip. Uh, I find this is a really easy um, stitch patterning to work up. Um, otherwise there is your, and when you do this you probably want to go in and, and pull out those stitches so that you have more of that indention underneath, but otherwise that's how you do the diamond ribbon.